Hi, everybody. I thought in the way of um, a short introduction to our readings for chapter one, I would just take you through um, why I chose these three pieces. And um, I, I feel like they're all pretty easy reading, um, but they're all sort of different in scope. So um, the Roger Weiss reading is uh, where the assignment will pull from. And this is a more generalized introduction to what's the role of a financial manager? Why is um, accounting such an important function as a support and a backbone for producing information that managers and the board can use to make decisions for an organization? Um, and then it gives some examples of um, different types of financial statements. So let me just go over and let's see if we can look at that piece. So um, this is this would be the first reading that I would choose to do the, the Roger Weiss piece. And again, it's going to um, start us off by talking about the difference between cash and accrual accounting. And this is how you spell accrual. Um, you may or may not be familiar with this, but for most of us um, in our lives, we keep our financial records, i.e. our checkbooks or our bank statements based on <clears throat> cash in and cash out. And in the accounting world, um, most often that's not how we keep our books. We use something called accrual-based accounting, which um, means that if we have the right to receive funds, so somebody pledges money to us, we can record that as a receivable on our books even before we've got the cash. Um, conversely, if we owe somebody money, we will record a payable um, and a commensurate expense um, or perhaps a um, asset if we've purchased something that we owe money for on our books immediately. So we see transactions reflected before the cash uh, changes hands. So that's a really important thing to um, keep in mind as we go through the course. Um, in nonprofit, we use something called fund accounting. Um, and you can either have a single fund where there is one um, essentially unrestricted flow of revenue coming in and expenses and obligations to be met, or in multiple um, fund budgeting situations, mul multiple fund situations, it's usually for larger, more complex organizations where um, there may be many different things happen happening simultaneously, different missions being funded, different um, actual physical structures being funded, um, or different projects being funded. So you wanna track each of those <clears throat> individually. Um, both figure 5.9 and figure 5.10 will be utilized for your homework for this unit. Um, so also in the Weiss piece, which is what we're looking at, the Korfman piece um, digs into this in much more detail. I'm gonna take a quick peek at that. But this is the first time that you'll see a balance sheet if you're not in the accounting world. And it illustrates something called our accounting equation. And the accounting equation essentially says that whatever our assets are, i.e. what we earn, um, own, will equal what we owe our liabilities. And the difference is called our net assets. So assets equals liabilities plus net assets or equity. In the for-profit world, we call it equity. In the not-for-profit world, we call it net assets. And really, um, net assets change, obviously, as our assets themselves change, more or less cash, more or less grants receivable, more or less fixed assets, um, long-term assets, and our liabilities change. And these net assets, or equity as we call them in the for-profit world, can be either unrestricted or restricted. Unrestricted means they're available for utilization for, to meet the operational needs of the organization. Unrestricted is for a very specific purpose, a capital campaign or a particular project where it's identified um, under a specific grant. So um, this is your basic accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities 
plus net assets. Then in, in the Weiss piece, they call this an income statement. Really in the nonprofit world, we call it a statement of activities. So whereas the balance sheet provides you a snapshot of a point in time, an income statement um, identifies what's happened over a time period or the statement of activities. And you can see here that they're doing um, one month of activity and then year to date. And it looks um, like their fiscal year in this example starts on July 1st and um, ends on December 31st is the year to date um, data. I'm just taking you really quickly through a snapshot of some to familiarize you with terms. That's the purpose. We'll do a whole section on internal controls. So um, at this point, you can kind of skim over this. Um, clearly important, particularly in smaller offices, much more difficult to um, maintain really high quality internal control processes. Um, but please take a look at this. And then um, this identifies, again, just quick synopsis on what we're required to report. As a nonprofit, we will have applied with the IRS to gain that nonprofit status. And even though we don't have to pay taxes, we have to file a return, a report of exempt organizations called a 990. And we'll be um, doing one of those in this class or taking a look at one. Um, and then lastly, they're just talking about different ways here that you can actually um, fund your organization's mission. So um, you may be a membership organization, you may write grants, you may solicit um, direct donor um, giving um, plans. You may have events, you may have unrelated business income. Um, so there's many, many ways to um, develop <clears throat> funds for an organization. So that's just sort of an overview of that piece. And then this is the Korfman piece. And I really like this because it, it takes what we read about with the Weiss piece and digs in a little bit deeper um, and gives us some more uh, leverage or utilitarian uh, purpose around the quote unquote building blocks of accounting, right? So um, it, I know that you know what a revenue and expense and asset is, but these um, help us kind of gain uh, fluency with the technical definitions of them. So spend some time in this, please. Um, so revenue may, it says resources, usually money, but not always. You may earn revenue um, if somebody gifts you, if you're a, you know, a set of Missoula Aging Services and somebody gifted you a van or um, an, an in-home, a, a home where you could provide in-home services for, for elderly clients. So your revenue does not necessarily mean cash. Um Expenses obviously are things that we um, expend our resources on in order to attain our mission. And then this uh, actually breaks down some very specific types of assets. Please read through this and different kinds of liabilities. Probably the most um, interesting or difficult to understand, I guess, liability is deferred revenue. And that's if we have um, collected money uh, or resources for a service we have not yet provided, that is that is not a current revenue. That's actually a liability because when now we owe um, we owe the service, um, we owe our clients or our patrons or our <clears throat> donors something. So they've prepaid, say, for a big gala event that's going to be held on New Year's Eve. In my books right now, that is not going to show as revenue. That's going to show as a deferred revenue, which is actually a liability because we owe them that gala event. So here is re <clears throat> reiterating the accounting um, formula equation. And then please spend time reading through these principles kind of carefully. We've talked about accrual based accounting. Um, and it is, uh, it's, it's critical that you buy in that this is the accepted modality of keeping our books and that it's not, it doesn't really look like what we're used to doing personally. 
And then the last piece um, is just a, a snapshot of the difference for, between for-profits and not-for-profits. And most of us feel like, oh gosh, we could you know, easily and succinctly define that. Clearly the difference is one is generating resources to meet a mission and one is generating profit for stockholders, which is essentially the difference. Um, but it, it actually, there's, there's more to it than that. So um, this piece is, uh, talks about how a nonprofit, although it's run in, uh, or should be run um, it, with best business practices as you would a for-profit organization, that there's lots of different um, responsibilities, primarily with a uh, board of directors overseeing management, um, that the fiduciary responsibility and stewardship stops there. Um, and that you are beholden to your clients or patrons or those that you serve. And at the end of the life of a nonprofit, um, the distribution of whatever wealth has been accumulated has to occur to another nonprofit, right? So um, certainly in meeting the nonprofit's missions, you're welcome or encouraged to or need to you know, pay salaries and benefits and uh, make investments and all the things that a for-profit business does. But at the end of the day, um, it is set out to carry a designated mission or specific purpose and the IRS has granted you authority to operate in that modality. Um, the other thing that I like about this piece is um, just giving some really standardized um, a checklist of what a financial manager does. And I think sometimes, you know, it's like, okay, we've got to get off the financial statements, certainly. But we're also the frontline person on um, risk management, um, procuring insurance, making sure we have internal controls in place so that our risk is lowered, and keeping, you know, costs in control, uh, working with bankers and finance sources to obtain capital to meet our uh, not only our working capital needs, which is our day-to-day -day current assets and current li liabilities, but our long-term strategic needs. So developing those relationships and managing those um, support services are a really important piece of what we do as well. And then um, we'll have a unit on budgeting, two-week two unit actually on budgeting. Um, this is another really critical, crucial role that we um, serve or manage, um, spearhead for sure, as a financial manager. And um, this, the, at the end of this talks about um, where funding comes from, how we build and develop and maintain those relationships. Um, and uh, one more time about our assets, liabilities, revenues, and expenditures. So you'll see this um, a number of times, the formula. Um, so please bear with that. But I think the more reinforcement, the better. Um, I'm really excited to uh, have you guys dig in on this and, um, oops, and start to understand, um, become conversant with the terminology and um, feel proficient with the ideas around, um, around accounting and financial management. Please let me know if you have any questions and I'm gonna send out those doodle polls uh, in a few minutes here. So the sooner you can respond to that, the better. And again, welcome to the class. Thanks, bye.